Tesla's China Gigafactory has grown rapidly over the past two and a half years, from site grading in early 2019 to first Model 3 deliveries by the end of that same year, and to today when Giga Shanghai is nearing a production capacity of 450,000 electric vehicles per year comprising of just the Tesla Model 3 and the Model Y. As usual, after the last Tesla China numbers have come out, the mainstream media managed to focus on a strange piece of data which led them to conclude that Tesla's China shipments plunged in July. Of course, the title is accurate because this is true for the local shipments, except it's highly misleading for those who don't closely follow Tesla, giving them the opposite impression. Tesla's July sales in China alone were surprisingly strong and just under 33,000 vehicles shipped, and that run rate works out to be about 400,000 vehicles per year, again just from China. Keep in mind that last year Tesla delivered 500,000 cars in total, including in the US and China, but right now each factory is almost capable of achieving that on their own. The important takeaway is that Tesla's deliveries tend to follow a quarterly cycle where the third month in every quarter usually has a larger end of quarter push for deliveries. So although the shipment in the month of July is around the same as June, this isn't the right comparison. Comparing July to April and January makes more sense as all three are the first month of the quarter and in this case, Tesla's China July sales are up 27% over April. This gives Tesla a good head start for crushing last quarter's delivery numbers. However, the media is picking up on the fact that Tesla only has a small number of deliveries locally, shown in black, whereas they ship the vehicles, shown in pink, to countries outside of China. Of course, a delivery is a delivery for Tesla and counts towards their revenue and earnings. As Kathy Wood from ARK Invest notes, that Tesla has switched its export hub from the United States to China and is now delivering high quality EVs into the European market. Elon Musk actually clarifies and points out that in the first half of the quarter, the deliveries are tailored towards exports whereas the second half is for the local market. And this is important because the exports usually take longer to deliver, so by focusing on exports first, Tesla can recognize that revenue faster as shipments arrive before the end of the quarter. Now Sam Corris from ARK Invest does say that these July numbers from Tesla don't look like a coincidence. He might be referring to Tesla still maintaining the number one spot in China with the local shipments, but the media may have caught on to the real reason. Now before I forget, please stop using Yahoo Finance, stop using Google Finance, and have a look at our website themarketisopen.com for instant stock quotes and financial data going back 10 years and it's all freely available. Now as exciting as things are for Tesla in China, this leads us to the next piece of news that may contribute to the future drastic expansion of Tesla's business coming from China. There's a rumor from Chinese media outlets that was tweeted by Ray for Tesla stating that Tesla has completed a prototype of its next mass market vehicle, suppliers have been lined up, and they're planning for trial production by the end of this year. Now this is referring to Tesla's potential hatchback type vehicle or compact car that Elon Musk has stated will come out of China. When Giga Shanghai first launched, they opened the first Tesla design center with the ambition to create a vehicle for the local market that would also be exported. Earlier this year, Tesla was even looking to hire a chief designer for this new site in China. While it's highly speculative that Tesla is almost ready with what people call a Model 2, I personally prefer the Model 1 or Model 0, Tesla is likely working on this compact car, but it may still be ways off from mass production. When Tesla designs a vehicle, they don't just make a prototype, they're always thinking about how to make it as manufacturable as possible and thus work closely with manufacturing to actually produce the vehicle that they're designing. This may sound trivial, but Elon Musk continues to warn that prototypes are easy, mass production is hard. Tesla has experience bringing up multiple production lines now, even in China for the Model 3 and Y, and has now garnered local experience for mass producing vehicles. Trial production, even if true, is still in the early phases and doesn't mean that Tesla will be pumping out millions of new compact cars in the near future. Nevertheless, it's a good sign that Tesla has this important new vehicle in the works. At Tesla's Battery Day event, Elon Musk and Drew Baglino announced plans for a $25,000 vehicle for the United States. 
but Tesla could conceivably come out with a vehicle at this compelling price point out of China sooner than people think. Low cost coupled with the speed that the Shanghai Gigafactory is moving at, an electric car priced at $25,000 could be devastating for industry competitors, especially as Tesla has now designated China as their export hub. This could eventually have an impact on the European automakers even, as Tesla's competitors are still playing catch-up, mainly with Tesla's second-generation vehicles, the Model S and X. At the same time, we've seen everyone focusing on Model 3 and Y, whether it's companies looking to compete, or even Wall Street trying to gauge Tesla's growth rate and production. Adding a $25,000 compact car into the mix could be gigantic for Tesla. Elon Musk has predicted that once all four of Tesla's main gigafactories are up and running, Tesla could achieve 1.5 million unit sales of the Model Y, and this SUV will start above $40,000 for the base model. Imagine the demand for a compelling EV that's two-thirds the price. The vehicle market isn't at all linear when it comes to pricing and demand. Tesla originally started with a $50,000 higher-end version of the Model 3, but when Tesla released the $35,000 Standard Range, which later became the Standard Range Plus, the size of the market grew by about five times. Back then, the average price of a car in the United States was near $32,000, but currently, this number has increased to $40,000 on average coming out of the pandemic. And so a $25,000 model designed for the lower end of the market could provide the groundwork that Tesla needs to hit its interim goal of 20 million vehicles sold annually by 2030. Tesla's overall purpose is to transition the world to sustainable energy. So unlike Apple, Tesla has no problem selling a lower priced vehicle as long as it meets the high bar for safety, performance, range, and a host of other factors to make it a compelling offering. Once people use a Tesla, they tend to stay within the ecosystem. It's a sticky product that people love, and over time, Tesla could work to make it even stickier with more software and services to help them continue to grow far into the future. Now, electric vehicles up until now are known to be more expensive than gas cars. According to Tesla's recent impact report, a Model 3 Standard Range Plus now almost has the same total cost of ownership versus the Toyota Camry, which is the best-selling car in the United States. But the holy grail is to beat ICE cars on sticker price, which will accelerate the shift to EVs. In order to accomplish this, Tesla needs to tackle the most expensive component of the vehicle, which is the battery. One of the main secret weapons that Tesla has in its arsenal is the new 4680 battery cell. During Tesla's Battery Day event, someone asked a question, which to paraphrase, was what happens if a solid state battery or just a new battery chemistry enters the picture down the line? Will Tesla be able to adapt to that? And Elon Musk stated that essentially, while it may require some tweaks, the 4680 battery cells and production line can be adjusted for other chemistries. So technically, Tesla can use a much cheaper chemistry such as lithium iron phosphate or LFP in their 4680s to take advantage of the cost savings through their highly efficient battery design. As Ars Technica notes, battery prices have fallen significantly every year for the last decade. In 2020, it's estimated that Tesla's batteries cost $115 per kilowatt hour. $100 is the approximate holy grail point that enables electric cars to surpass gas cars in sticker price. Given Tesla's battery roadmap, they plan to almost halve the cost over the next few years, which could allow for much cheaper electric vehicles. There are also reports that Tesla has been testing BYD's Blade batteries. BYD is the maker of cars, trucks, and buses in China. In June 2021, they reportedly sold 40,000 EVs. However, the reporting on this is a little bit wonky, as the media includes hybrid vehicles in this number. Out of the 40,000, about half, or 20,000, were battery electric vehicles, which is still impressive given that Tesla sold just over 30,000 EVs in June. For the first time in 2020, battery pack costs were said to have dropped below $100 per kilowatt hour in China using the lithium iron phosphate LFP battery chemistry, which is safe, cheap, and durable. It has no cobalt, which lowers the cost, and it's not flammable. These cheaper battery packs also offer cell-to-pack design, which differs from cell-to-module-to-pack design, which is the current way of making battery packs and is more expensive given the extra redundant modules holding batteries in place. 
Now, Tesla uses LFP batteries already on the China-made Model 3 and sources its LFP batteries from Cattle, CATL, the largest battery manufacturer in China. But according to Everbright Securities, BYD's lithium iron phosphate batteries with CTP, or cell to pack, are even cheaper than Cattle's, near $80 US converted from euros per kilowatt hour at the pack level. And this is according to this source. While Elon Musk has tweeted about studying the blade in 2019, which could be a hidden BYD blade battery reference, BYD has denied the rumors that it will be supplying Tesla. Now, further along the same lines, Kathy Wood of ARK Invest in last week's In the Know report stated that for the first time, the Nissan Leaf with subsidies will drop below $20,000, and she predicts that this will be the beginning of a boom in the electric vehicle space. Without subsidies, the LEAF would be priced at $25,000, which lines up nicely with the rumored Tesla plans to ship a $25,000 EV. Kathy Wood also mentions that some companies with inferior products will be stuck with high inventories and be forced to slash prices to move their vehicles, and specifically says that companies relying on prismatic battery cells, these are larger rectangular shaped cells, which many automakers use, even BYD as discussed earlier, these battery cells are inferior to cylindrical cells which Tesla produces and this could end up being a weak spot for other manufacturers. So this could support the argument that Tesla won't go with BYD. However, that said, even if battery cells are inferior, they could still be compelling at the right price. Currently, Tesla needs all the batteries they can get their hands on and have asked their suppliers to double battery production next year. If the $25,000 vehicle comes out of hiding, however, Tesla will need significantly more batteries to reach the gigantic scale that it needs to produce this highly affordable electric vehicle. So do you think Tesla will partner with BYD, one of their competitors, in order to source batteries? And let me know in the comments if you think a $25,000 Tesla will start being produced out of Giga Shanghai in the near future. Be sure to check out our last in-depth video on Giga Texas. Please hit the like button and subscribe for more content and research. We'd super appreciate that. And a huge shout out to all of our patrons who help to support our channel. Your support helps us to continue to make great content. Thank you guys so much for watching.